Well, we're about to set off on an interesting journey, one of the great adventure tracks in Australia. We're starting here at Inaminka. This building here behind me is the AIM Hospital, the old building that was completely restored. Originally, that provided the nurses with an opportunity to provide some medical services for this outback area. Inaminka has a trading post where you can fill up, which is what we've just done, and then we're setting off to go south down the Streslicky track. Now the Streslicky track will take us from here all the way through to the Flinders Ranges. Before leaving Inaminka, we not only stock up with plenty of fuel, but make sure that our water tanks are full and that we have plenty of food stocks on board. Ahead we have about 600 kilometres of corrugated gravel road before we reach the northern part of the Flinders Ranges. For a long time it was little more than a dusty, rough outback track, only used by a few locals and the occasional intrepid traveller. The first stop off are the Moomba gas fields. Natural gas from deep underground is drawn to the surface here, purified and then piped thousands of kilometres to Sydney and Adelaide. Used as a lifeline link to the outside world by cattle properties in this part of the outback, the Streslicky track divides into the older unmaintained track and the newer section which was built to allow access to the Moomba gas fields. The older track follows more closely the course of the Streslicky Creek and passes through many majestic sand dunes. It is rough and visually far more spectacular than the graded section which replaces this part of the original track. For our first overnight camp, we choose to stop in the interdune corridors between two large red sand dunes. The relentless, whispering winds of time have shaped the sand hills for thousands of years. The live sand on the crest of the dunes sculpted into a myriad of ripples by the desert wind. Morning, and time to move on after a good night's rest. Soon we reach the point where the track crosses Streslecky Creek. Today when we travel down the Streslecky track we've got a pretty good map. It shows us where the track is, although it's actually more of a highway. The first person to come here though, he had no track. His name was Harry Redford and he came here in 1870 and he was driving 1,000 head of stolen cattle from Queensland all the way down to Adelaide. He followed the Streslecky Creek. Unfortunately for him, he was caught and he went to trial in Roma in Queensland. Mind you, the jury was made up out of cattlemen. They admired his feat by opening up this new stock route that they let him off. And the judge was disgusted with this and said that, thank God, gentlemen, that this decision is yours and not mine. Now today, if you take a look at this creek here, you can see there isn't really much of a creek to it. It hardly ever flows except in times of extreme rain. It's just a chain of water holes. Harry Redford, however, was smart enough to know that and he utilised it as one of the great feats of droving in Australian history. The outback of Australia is full of contrast and contradictions. Monte Colina Boar is one such amazing contradiction. Situated approximately halfway along the Streslecky track, a boar was sunk deep into the underground in search of oil or gas. Something more useful was discovered, however, in the form of an abundant supply of artesian water. Today, it has created a lake in the desert. Here, the desert is known as the Cobbler Desert, for in the early days there was one particularly difficult sand dune known to the early two-wheel drive truck drivers as the Cobbler. Over the years, when sheep were introduced into this area, followed by years of drought and a plague of voraciously hungry rabbits, the natural vegetation was almost totally destroyed. The winds of the desert blew away the sand, leaving clumps where the remaining vegetation survived. Oh, can't leave your hand there. It's pretty hot, Ed. Yeah. yeah. Too hot for a bath. Yes, there's a spa here. Today, this desert surrounds the water which flows from the bore as if to emphasise the stark contrast between two of the most astonishing of man-made creations. It's been used by stockmen droving along the track and is often used today by travellers, such as us, as a great place to camp.
The waters flowing from the ground are quite hot. As the water flows away from its source, it cools quickly. The birds of the desert have come to rely upon this supply of water and thousands nest here and raise their young for the next season. Further south along the track as we get closer to the northern part of the Flinders Ranges, we come across further evidence of man's attempt to tame this part of the outback. In the 1850s, Blanchwater was established as a sheep and cattle station, but its history proved to be one of short-lived prosperity when tested by drought, isolation and flood. In its heyday in the late 1870s, it became famous for breeding good quality horses. They were used by the Cobb & Co Coach Company and a great many were supplied to the Indian Army. By 1885, rabbit plagues ravaged the fodder and the whole project collapsed and failed quickly. Today, the ruins are a poignant reminder of how nature will always have the upper hand in a harsh, unforgiving land. The last 100 kilometres takes us through many more dry creek beds, corrugated roads and dust. Just before we reach the town of Lyndhurst, we stop off to visit a man who's been living in this part of the world for 40 years. Cornelius Alferink is what might be called a bit of a hermit in many ways, and yet he enjoys talking to visitors. He lives in a simple makeshift home and uses talc rock from the northern Flinders Ranges talc mine to create unusual sculptures. And he is undoubtedly what could be called an outback character. Soon it's back to the track and all too quickly our journey is coming to an end. The Flinders Ranges loom on the horizon. The Streslecki has provided an interesting glimpse into many aspects of our past history. And although we have travelled it several times before, this is the first time we have done it towing a caravan.